Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello and welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are sitting down with Nick Perret. Nick is a CEO of Summit Media. He's the number one marketing agency in all of roofing. At least that's the rumor I hear on the street. Uh, Nick has a wealth of knowledge in computer technology, online advertising, and years of supporting contractors take advantage of both of those things. So today we're going to talk about managing your business and especially leads and clients and how a CRM system greatly helps you increase your business's ability to communicate and manage those connections, as well as convert those leads into actual clients and business. So those important connections don't get lost. So hello, Nick, and thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Mike, my friend, what's going on? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You bet. Happy to have you. It's always always good to chat and catch up. Absolutely. So, so tell me, Nick, uh, or tell the listeners, I should say, what does a modern contractor look like today that's taking advantage of these types of tools? Well, you know, you can almost reverse engineer that a little bit and think about a negative experience that you have with a contractor. So let's say that you hire somebody to work on your, your home um, or your property building, whatever it might be. And you had a bad experience with them. Usually it has to do with communication. You hear it all the time, right? Contractors lack the ability to communicate to their prospects and their customers. So it's losing them opportunities to close more deals. It's losing them opportunities to get, you know, a, a good quality experience for the customer where it leads, you know, then ends up getting referrals and reviews and things like that. Right. So our main goal at SUMA is how can we implement technology, right, to streamline business operations for, for, for roofing contractors and help improve their communication, whether it's internal to their employees or to um, their customers. Makes sense. Well, tell me this then. So what exactly can contractors do to take advantage of this online presence today? Well, so if you mean there's there's different buckets, right? So if, if you're looking at like online presence, online presence is more going to be how you you brand your 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 company, right? So that's going to be things like you know five star reviews on Google My Business. Yeah. It's going to be having a really good website. It's going to have you know social media pages that are are constantly posting content right on a regular basis. So maybe a few times a week, or maybe even a little bit more, right? showing off your projects, getting good customer reviews and testimonials online that you can showcase, right? Um, if, you, if you're doing some cool projects, video production and stuff like that's always a great way to do that and represent what you guys got going on. I mean, there's a variety of ways, but online like brand presence can be all about how you look online, right? Your perception of value that you, you have to offer your customers, right? So if, if let's say you spent money on a lead or maybe you were doing door to door sales, right? However that lead was generated, right? You paid for that. And when you have that person engaged with you in a sales process, right? At some point through that sales process, they're going to look you up online, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the perception of value really takes place. Now they're analyzing you online and there's a perception of value that you have to offer them right as a customer in their head getting informed okay so when you when you talk about online i mean you mentioned social how important is the social media side of things today you know it's really interesting i think that you you have to be active on social media for sure but there's a variety of ways you can you can go about social media some of it could be brand reputation and presence right and, and that's just making sure that that you're showing that you're active and that, you know, pretty much playing the part of your ideal customer. So whatever your ideal customer would look for online, trying to replicate that through social media posting, and, I mean, showing your showcasing your customers, your employees, your projects and stuff like that. Other people use it as a lead generation tool, 
right? Mm -hmm. Some people are doing Facebook advertising, have a ton of success with Facebook advertising. Now, that's not one of our specialties. Our specialties in terms of marketing is more on the outreach side, and we'll, and we'll dive into that. But there is a ton of people who are having a lot of success on places like Facebook advertising. Or if you look at LinkedIn, that's another great platform. And what's crazy is you even see platforms like TikTok. I mean, there's not a lot of contractors on TikTok, but the ones that are doing well on it, they're generating leads. You know, it's crazy. I've seen people people in the contracting space with, you know, 180,000 plus followers on TikTok. <laughs> and wow. maybe it's one of those situations where, hey, you know, they were the first players there, right? Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, if you look at Facebook as a social media platform, it's very, very saturated. Everybody and their mom has a, social, uh, a Facebook page and is trying to do something or sell something on, on Facebook, right? TikTok, as a contractor, probably not as many. So if you can figure out a way, right, if you're a very creative person and you feel like you can think of a way to utilize that for your business, for branding, it's it seems like it's doing some good things for businesses uh, in the contracting world. Yeah, so if it, all right, say it was TikTok or it was Facebook ads or it was lead gen that was outbound, like email campaigns, et cetera, what's the best way to manage those leads however they come in once they do? Yeah, so that's gonna be where the CRM system takes place, right? So, you know, we worked with a, a variety of different contractors, different sizes, um, in different stages of, of of their business as well. And no matter how far you are in your business, right, or where you're at, make sure you have some kind of CRM system. Now, what, what's so great about the CRM system is it can keep everybody on the same page, right? It's an organized, fundamental tool, right, where all the leads, jobs, and everything, right, and, and the communication between those people, those prospects, is all held in one spot, right? So, for example, we work with a lot of roofing contractors, right? So, ideally, the way you have it set up is no matter what your lead source is, whether it's a website, a, a social media form, or, uh, you know, face from a Facebook ad, or whatever it might be, or, or a sales-generated lead, you want to make sure that it's all integrated into your CRM system, Right. So now every contact and prospect is going to be in that CRM system just to make sure that everything, nothing's missed. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll work with some contractors and we'll do lead generation for them. And, you know, after the first month, we'll have the list of leads that we have generated for that client. And if they don't have a CRM system, <laughs> a lot of it gets lost. Right. They're, they're so busy. They get all these emails. They have all these things that they're trying to keep track of. Now, when you're looking at um, if you don't have that organized, you, you spend so much money in sales and marketing, but it falls through the cracks. So ideally, before you try to build this amazing marketing machine, you want that foundation that everything is sent, is, is located in. Yeah. So with the CRM, how commonly are you seeing uh, contractors take advantage of that versus not do you know is there any statistic that you can share it's getting a, it's getting a lot better right but the, the biggest thing that i notice in, in the software world is people will buy these tools and then like kind of implement them mm. right so what happens is they're paying x amount per month they maybe they have some contacts going in you know half the team uses the tool a little bit but there's not really rules to follow or like a process of the thing. So it's really not even built out. And then, you know, six months goes by, years go by and you're like, Hey, like, you know, how's everything going with your CRM or how's going, you know, with any software really yeah. that these contractors yeah. are implementing, how's it going? And they're like, Oh, it's not bad. But I'm like, honestly, I think if, if these contractors set up any of these softwares, I mean, we, we help contractors set up like a ton of different softwares. And if, if they really have them set up right, they would love the tool. Right. Like these tools are in existence for a reason, because if you leverage these, this technology, you're going to have a big competitive advantage over your, over your competition. You're, you, you know, the way you communicate to customers is going to be way better. Uh, your ROI and sales and marketing efforts going to be better. Your businesses are going to be more streamlined. Everyone's going to feel less chaotic because your business is now more systemized. Right. And everyone's going to be on the same page. It is beautiful. Right. Yeah. But contractors have to be willing to, to spend the money to get this stuff set up appropriately. Um, and honestly, a lot of people we work with, you know, lead generation and marketing, people will always have their like, I don't know if I can trust this company, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so there's a process to build that trust. But people usually see value in, in the technology implementation where it's like, hey, I can set up your CRM, you know, a proposal tool. You know, if you want to use company cam for taking your photos or whatever it might be, you know, we'll have everything organized in one spot. Right. And 
people see the value in that because if it can save them t- time and make it more profitable, it's kind of a no brainer. Well, and I think, and we do this in our business and most, I think most software companies would do this, but we, we track very, you know, definitely how much each lead costs, where does it come from, which campaigns work the best. And so because these leads can be so expensive, it only makes sense that you would really keep track of what is actually generating them, not only the most leads, but the, the actual best leads. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And like, yeah, like you're saying, you're paying for these leads. So you want to make sure you're maximizing this. And so, you know, one thing that uh, we noticed too on the lead side of things is having a proper follow-up system, right? Mm-hmm. You know, usually what happens is, is you know, it, we'll build out in the CRMs, their sales cycle, their production cycle, and everything like that. And they'll have all these different stages that we can take them through. The first step in the sales is going to be lead, right? And the next mm-hmm. one's going to be either an estimate or inspection or whatever the next step is in that discovery meeting process for the contractor. Now, what will happen is that it will be in the lead stage. Sales rep will call that lead, right? Mm-hmm. Guess what? They can't get a hold of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what happens when, What happens after one phone call that they were unable to get a hold of, of that, that prospect who's in need of their services? What do you think happens, Mike? Where does that think, lead go? I think at the bottom of the stack and they just it might get forgotten even, right? Is that that's what happened. It gets forgotten. I I dude, I used to be in outside sales. Trust me, I want the next hot thing. Give me yep. the next hot prospect, right? So that lead is now dead. Right. So the money you spent on that for the most part is dead. But if you set up automations where if it sits for that lead stage for three days, that person automatically gets a text and an email, you know. Mm-hmm following up with them to schedule that meeting or whatever it might be, your salesperson doesn't have to do any extra work, right? But you still have an opportunity to be like, hey, salesperson, if you follow these processes we build out, we're going to set up automations where we're going to help you do your job, which means you're going to sell more deals because you're going to schedule more meetings that might have been missed because we have a follow-up system for you, right? right? So now you're convincing the salesperson to do it, right? You're getting more leads that actually tr- convert into meetings, Right. And that's just a piece of it. But like automations and systems can do beautiful things for contractors because some of them, you know, if if they're a little bit further behind in this stuff and they implement this, it's going to be a night and day for their company. Yeah. And I know in this market, at least, you know, for the last couple of years, I've heard this so commonly. It's like, I can't get anyone to call me back. It's like, I got 10,000 feet of fence to put in. No one will even call me back. Right. Oh my gosh, man. It is, you, you, you nailed it. You completely nailed it. And it, it's a scary thing. So it's like, man, if we can, you know, focus on the fundamentals, mm-hmm. right. And just really be good about how everything's systemized. So each customer is going to have the same exact experience, mm-hmm. right. And you're having good communication to your team internally and to the, the, the prospect or customer, good things are going to happen. Cause now you're just doing the fundamentals, which is high quality communication, the beauty of communication, right? And you're going to be winning more deals, right? Getting more customers, getting more reviews, getting more referrals by just having good communication organization. Right. Yeah, that's that's, uh, well stated. And I I know it to be a fact, but I know that a lot of listeners out there, you know, they're tracking things on paper or spreadsheets or I've seen hundreds literally of magnet boards in you know shop floors or office spaces of of construction companies that i've visited over the years and it's just amazing what a crm will do for a company when once it's properly set up yeah mike my favorite is the, like the big contractors that have no like no tech no no processes mm-hmm. like written down and they have somehow built this like really big company i'm like first off that is super impressive that right. you were able to do that without this tech stuff but it's like Imagine if you put that in now, right. you know, what could happen? Because you already got the brand, you got the projects, everything. Well, and they say, well, we're too busy. And it's like, well, yeah, but if you actually, if you follow it up properly and you had people beating down your door, well, the next thing you can do is raise your prices a little bit, right? You're still going to get that volume of work you can handle. And now your profitability goes up. I mean, it just, it just makes sense. But you got to take that first step to know, right? Amen to that, man. Well said. So is there, are there CRM systems that you often recommend or there ones that you standardize on or what are some options that companies could take a look at if they're interested in implementing something like this? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm always looking to do. So I'll I'll mention a few different tech companies if you if you don't sure. mind. But sure. um, I'm always trying to do like tech stacks, right? So pretty much what that means is like we try to like stack different technology that we see is trending in the space or we think could you know differentiate some things or make it a little bit easier for you guys. Um, so Job Nimbus is a big one. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they have what we call open APIs, which basically means we can connect other tools to their system very easily, right? So they have like integrated partners that's no energy, but there's some other ones that because it's open, we can add them. So the, the CRM, I, we love Job Nimbus, especially in, in the roofing space, right? Um, so you have Job Nimbus, and then we hear another thing is, all right, hey, we spend way too much time on putting together proposals, right? It, what happens is um, I, I get home from work, I did all this, all all my stuff today. I put out all the fires. I did all my tasks, but now I have to put together two proposals, right? Uh-huh. And so we we like to use Sumo Quote. Uh, reason why is pretty much we can we can put all our costs, right, our material costs, everything into the system. You know, decide on what our markup's going to be. Make it is simple enough where you can make it from your phone, right? We'll custom design those, make them, you know, at a brand standpoint, really stand out from other proposals that that prospects are getting. Love that tool. Uh, company cam, right? And remember, all this gets integrated. Now, with with company cam, what we like is you pretty much use it as to get all your before and after photos of these projects that you're doing for your record. It, it's pretty cool. Then you have like a map where you've done all your projects. Um, they're they're constantly innovating um, and doing some really good things. So they're one of the more popular tools for mm-hmm. sure that a lot of the people that we know uh, are, are using it. So those are probably like the three big ones. We have um, tools like Hail Trace for people who are doing like insurance restoration work. That's like a big one for us in our space um, that, that pretty much allows you to identify where storm maps are. So let's say if, if, it, if there's a storm, it hits an area, it can be synced up to your job Nimbus, where if you, if, if you have customers who are in that area that have been hit, you wow. know. And so then that way I can now notify my previous customers Right, which are going to be the easiest way to get into that area and start making things happen. How amazing! I mean, wow. <laughs> how how clutch is that, man? It's pretty cool. Well, and then you you mentioned something else. I think it's important to reiterate. You mentioned actually creating a quote on your phone. Yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about how stressed out people are. Like, I used to be in sales. My least favorite thing to do was run all my meetings like crush my day and then have to get back. Cause I did outside sales. I'd be traveling. I have to go to my hotel room and put like proposal together. Right. It's like, Oh dude, like I had such a good day, but because I had such a good day, not to do my admin stuff. Right. Yeah. So uh, I what, what sales personalities, like they, they want to just like have the next prospect. They want to get the next deal. They want to yeah. be spending time. You want your salespeople yeah, to be work, spending right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The fun work. Well, and the thing is, is if you have good salespeople and you put them in a spot, I think, where they can go ha- like go do what they're best at, which is talk to people, right? Potential customers and customers. Right. And you try to handle as much of them and stuff as possible. You can limit it for them, right? So that's what Sumo Quotes is going to do for them. It's going to save them time. They're not going to, have to spend as much time on admin. I want to limit my salesperson to admin work as much yeah. as possible. Yeah, you want them to sell the next job, right? Because that's how you're going to get more money. That's how they're going to get more money. Right. Yeah, I love that. So, so with these tools in place, so there's automation of you know quoting and tracking you know companies that might be prospects in an area, like you mentioned, Hail Trace. Once you've done all that. What kind of automation is there for internal communication within the team? Yeah, hundred percent. So pretty much what we do is it's it's pretty cool. We so we set up boards. We set up sales board, and we set up uh, a production board, right? Digital, so right? Which, obviously. <laughs> what's up? Digital, digital no, production. It, board. That, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay. We, we take the boards that these guys are used to <laughs> using, right, on the whiteboard, right. and we, we we put it, we make it digitally, right. And okay. so there's gonna be sales production, be the big ones, and then there'll be um, billing and closing. That that's kind of how 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 standard it is. But mm-hmm. pretty much what you want to do is anything that's internal communication, you want reminders. Right. So whether it's to follow up with a lead or follow up with a prospect or whatever it might be. Right. We want to make sure that um, 
we're reminding people to do so. Because usually what happens is people get busy, they forget things what to do. So if we're able to send automations where they get like an email reminder, uh, a job nimbus reminder or a text reminder, it just makes sure that everyone stays on top of things. Now, right. when you're when you're looking at like a sales board, for example, right? And I'll go through some other ones. It starts with lead, right? Then it goes to like the meeting or whatever it might be. And then it'll go to proposal and they'll go to proposal one, proposal loss, just for a simple board. The whole goal with automations is to push that lead from left to right. Just think of it that way. That's the easiest way to think about it because you want to get it through the journey, right? So as soon as that lead comes in, the faster we can move it all the way through the sales board, all the way into production, get it into billing, right? And then close out that job, the faster you're going to get a return on your investment for that lead, Hmm. right? And that's also going to help with any kind of bottlenecking. So whether it maybe maybe there's a point in the production process, right, where all of a sudden, you know, somebody forgets to order materials or whatever it might be, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a miscommunication. That's where we need to make sure that we're, not, we're, we're improving our speed through that production process. So now what we can do is we can track, you know, what day did that lead come in to production? Mm-hmm. When did it get out of production, right? Where was the bottleneck? What stage did it stay in too much, right? So if we can send reminders to the people to order materials, right? Send a reminder to the customer that will be there, uh, you know, tomorrow at six o'clock or whatever it might be, right? Mm-hmm. Pushing that thing all the way through, through automations is, is huge, right? And, and ideally what you want to do is pretty much just think about this process, right? So if you're going to hire someone like us, just think about your process right now. Right. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to digitalize that. You guys are already doing this. You already have a process. You already have a system. Now we just got to pull it out of you guys. <laughs> and that, that's the hardest part is we have to write, you know, ask the right questions about it. Right. Well, who's going to get communicated to in this stage? Right. You know what I mean? Really understanding who's part of what. And, and it's kind of cool because all of a sudden everyone starts to realize that they already kind of had it. But yeah. it was just there's missing some some fundamental pieces. Well, there's a go button at the beginning and then at the end, it's like a digital conveyor belt, right? Like yeah. it's a fixed process and there's certain steps and they all need to be taken in a certain order and a certain time frame. And why wouldn't you automate that if, if you had a tool that could help you do that? It's beautiful. And, and, and sometimes, I mean, you know, we, we've taken people, uh, we're working with a contract out in Florida right now. And we, we started out doing lead generation. And we, then we realized they're running the entire the entire um, company uh, on pen and paper. And so we realized when we started to follow up about, hey, what happened to this lead or whatever it might be, that there was some misconnect, right? And there was some stuff mm-hmm. we could probably organize. So we actually were like, all right, we're going to pause <laughs> lead generation. Let, let's just talk about it and see if we can help you with the systems and processes, right? And we, we started to set up all these different tools for them. And in, in the beginning, it was a little bit, it was a lot to digest, right? But we do ongoing training and everything like that and kind of help through a lot of stuff, make tutorial videos. And it, it was a little bit of a learning curve in the front end. And I'd be a liar. If you've been running your company for five, 10 years on pen and paper, it's going to be a bigger transition. But you got to think, you know, that friction in the, in the front end that you're going to have to deal with will hopefully be worth the investment. Look at it as an investment, right? In my mind, it makes your company more valuable, really, if it's systemized and organized. No question. Well, yeah, you can predict that revenue, which is that's everybody's goal, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so the other thing I, in my mind, I know, I mean, the, the word CRM is customer relationship management tool, right? So man is the, the management of that relationship. Relationship isn't one and done, right? That, that means an ongoing connection. So what are some tools within the CRM that companies are using to maintain that relationship and keep connected with all of their customers and prospects. I mean, I still love email marketing. I, I really do. I, I think that email marketing still has a, a ton of opportunity to be communicating, even text message marketing too. So text message marketing and email is kind of like the one, two punch that we really like to utilize, right? Whether it's communicating with, with your, your customers or trying to generate leads. Texting is the way of the future in my mind though mm-hmm. when you're looking at the best way to communicate to pot- uh, potential customers and um uh and your current customers so if you're looking at for example lead generation right 
nowadays, everything starts with good data. Everything. Right. Right, right. right. It is the beauty. We're in the data era right now. Right. And everything you're doing when a marketing standpoint is surrounded by that. So, for example, for us, you know, we work with a lot of roofing contractors, so they want to work with commercial property owners and property management companies. That's who they want to work with. So now, I mean, you can find databases like CoStar, Reonomy, right? These commercial databases that have accurate information of your ideal prospects. Now, this is for any commercial contractor, really. It doesn't really mm-hmm. matter, right? And you can use that information. What we do is we actually take that information out, right? And we make a list of your ideal clients, right? So now we have a sales list and a marketing list of the exact people you want to work with, and they're the key decision maker, right? Once we have that data, we run it through a verification tool. Basically, verify the data is good before we run our campaigns. Never bounce for emails. Truly, right. uh, Twilio lookup for phone numbers, right? Yeah, no, no bum phone numbers, right? <laughs> no bum phone numbers. Yeah. So now we have the, the accurate information of your deal clients. Right. Then we put them through email, uh, email campaigns and text campaigns, right? Just asking these people if they want an inspection, if they're willing to meet with you guys. And it is unbelievable the response that we've had on text message marketing. Now, when you want to just have good communication with your customers, right? Doing some kind of text campaigns, right? Think about the email campaigns you're already doing to your current client base, right? To just build that relationship. What are some fun text messages that you could do? Maybe mm-hmm. giveaways, riddles, right? First person to answer this riddle, you know, wins a $100 gift card. Now, I'm literally, I'm sending riddles to my commercial property owners, right? <laughs> that maybe they don't even work with me yet. But the thing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm sending the riddle. I'm not even bothering them you know what i mean so little things like that could help you win because everybody is on their phone and everybody's looking at text messages so if you look at open rate and visibility it's text Mm -hmm. messages right now well and the thing with any marketing you just want to be top of mind so when there's an issue that you're you're the name you're the logo that comes to their brain right Top of mind. Exactly. So that's why you do little drip campaigns, right? Like you're saying, what are you doing to to, to stay in touch with your current customer base? That's where your money is. That's where the reviews come from, the referrals, the additional business or new business. It's all coming from that that previous client base. Yeah, I love that. I I love the the point that you made about the text text messaging campaigns because it's it's absolutely true. You know, emails bounce. They get unread, they get spam filtered. But if you send somebody a text, they're like, they got it. You know, oh, yeah. they're, they're going to get it. They may delete what, it, but they, <laughs> they probably saw it before. They're they seeing it, it right? though. There's, and then, like yeah. you said, you're, you're just hoping top of mind right. where it's more of like you're hoping that it's the right time that they're going to need your services for sure. But yeah, with the text, I mean, you can send text reminders from your CRM system to, to, to make sure that, um, you you know, you send reminders to the people internally. You could do re- reminders for production to your customers via text message. I mean, there's so many different things you can do that. I mean, think about it. If you already have a customer and you're going through the project phases and any reminder or update notification, you just, you know, text them through your system. It's pretty nice. And that can be, and then that conversation stays in your CRM system. So everybody has it to reference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're tracking the steps that that went through in order to, again, same thing, win, win business, right? You, it took 14 contacts or touch points before they actually picked up the phone and called you or sent in an email request, right? Yep, exactly. So do you know, I mean, is there are there any averages or, or revenue, you know, or cost type, uh, you know, effectiveness statistics that you can share? Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you know, like Job Nimbus alone, it, it's interesting because we, we take all these different softwares, right? And we're kind of developing our own solution. So we don't actually create any softwares or develop any softwares. Pretty much what I do is like, we're kind of just eyeing up all these different tools that we see people using, right? We're working with contractors all over the country. What tools are they using? What's working well? You know, who is really good to define system, right? If we're working with some of the bigger companies, it's like, hey, what processes have they built out, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? To, to, and understanding that, right? So what we do is we take all these different softwares and we build our own pretty much solution, if you will. Uh, yeah. But like for Job Nimbus, they say average revenue growth is 43%. Eight hours a week saved per person, 25% more payments collected. And and that's just for, you know, one of the tools. 
You know what I mean? So when we take all these different tools and, you know, try to make this ideal system for this, con- these, for roofing contractors, if you will, for us, um, good things are going to happen. You're going to save a lot of time. Uh, you know, hopefully your, your revenue should grow, right? And then in your return on investment for any sales or marketing efforts should go up. Um, and then, yeah, just customer satisfaction too, I feel like it's a big one. When you're yeah. unorganized, it's really hard to keep your customers happy. When, when you're organized, you know, and, and everybody's on the same page, that customer every single time is going to have the exact same experience and it's going to be a good one. Yeah. And I always say, and I know a lot of businesses are really after referrals or at least everybody on paper, everybody says, oh, we love referrals and we want referrals. It's like, you know, we have a, at least here in our company, I always say one, one new logo, one new customer should, should and can always equal three more. So if, if you're maintaining those leads and taking care of them through a, a defined process and, and they, they feel that love, then they're very likely to refer you when they have an opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. People buy from those they uh, know, like, and trust. So, mm, Love that. So are there any, if people are listening and saying, you know, we're not using a CRM right now, um, sounds like maybe we should be. Are there questions or things that they should be asking themselves to you know, kind of qualify where they can leverage this or like what tools to go with you're saying. Yeah. Or? Yeah. Essentially what, you know, what are some questions they can ask to really kind of define the path that they should take? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, this is where, you know, getting a professional in this spot would definitely help, you know, either mm-hmm. someone like me or somebody else, uh, just because it, it's a little bit of an overwhelming process. And so the reason why a lot of this, this software, you know, integrations for contractors, you know, they'll go to like a trade show, they'll sign up for three different softwares. Um, They have a login first week after the conference, they log in, they look at it. It's like, man, this looks like a lot of work. They bounce out. (laughs) They never log back in. You know what I mean? And this, this, uh, that's kind of the story that I was talking about. And and that's why I started to realize that this is such a huge opportunity. Like have anything I think that we can do as a company, you know, lead stuff is great that, you know, that, that, that funds everything. But I think that uh, this is probably the most valuable thing that, that we could do for contractors, in honesty, because that software that you already know you should use because you heard it around the industry or you see them at the trade show, you see they're doing well. Those are the softwares you should be investing in. <laughs> so there isn't like a magic thing that I, I find out there. Like I get connected with people in the, in, in the industry. I find what, what vendors I like and have good relationships mm-hmm. with, and I feel like I can trust them and they would offer good support if I did bring them customers and stuff like that, you know, and that's what I look at. So we already know what tools you probably, if you're listening to this, you probably have listened to a lot of the tools that you should be using to, right? So biggest thing is, is, is get somebody that can help you implement this stuff, right? And I think every contract industry probably has somebody who is, is implementing CRMs or other tools. Because if you just make that jump and let them do it for you, it'll actually get done and you, you, your business will reap the rewards. Right. Yeah. Like that. Well, like they tell their prospects, hire a professional, hire somebody that does this every day, not, you know, some weekend warrior. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't think about that. When, when, you, when you're meeting with prospects and you tell them to, hey, hire us because we have this reputation, we have this insurance, we have all these different licenses, right? We take this time. Don't hire a truck in the truck, right? Same thing with this, right? Hire somebody that's going to get it done for you at high quality that you know you can trust, and it's going it's to be awesome for you guys. Love that. Great advice. So tell me this. This is a, a shifting gears just a little bit. What's something in, in your professional career, in your business, what's something you've learned or been grateful to come to an understanding to at this point? I mean, for me, you know, I, uh, I grew up in like a blue collar family in, in, in Wisconsin, right? So I, I kind of came from the, the, the contracting world, if you will. Uh, and then I went to college for, for marketing and ended up working for Milwaukee Tool after that and did some outside sales. So still, yeah, so I was still in the contracting world the entire time. Um, but I think that something that I learned through my time is like, no matter what you're doing in business, uh, just keep trucking, right? It, it, and, and the opportunity you're gonna you're gonna find opportunity. For me, like I knew when to work with contractors, and you know I was getting started. You've had Randy on the show. Uh, he was just starting the Roofing Academy at the same time I was starting Suma. Right. So that way, when you know someone became a member of the Roofing Academy, I was able to help them on the marketing side, right? And I met so many different people in roofing, 
And, and that opportunity kind of like found me, if you will, roofing found me is what they like to say, right? You know, yeah. and, and I was so grateful for it. So I would say, honestly, for the, the roofing industry, I've been very, very grateful. Um, and then that always takes me to my next thing too, is go, go niche, be specialized. You know, when we're working with all the contractors, uh, we weren't the best. And now I think when we're working with, you know, contractors or roofing contractors, almost specifically commercial roofing contractors at this point, um, you're able to get really good at what you do because you're doing the same thing for the same people. You're not trying to be the best at everything, right? So the more specialized you can be, I think, in the contracting world, the better you're going to be. So your customers are going to be happier, right? You're going to get more return business. You're going to get more referrals, more reviews, right? Which leads to big wins. Right. So. right. Love it. All, all great stuff. So, so last personal question, what the skill that Nick Perrette has developed and um, what you'd call your superpower my superpower um you know it's interesting when when i started the suma media i did everything and i realized mm-hmm. i i sucked at a lot a <laughs> lot of things right you know now we look at our team they might be able to get something done in 15 minutes that took me four hours you know yeah. and and, and so for me, I feel like uh, I think communication is, is one of my superpowers, right? I'm, I'm not very good at a lot of things, but I really like having conversations with people, communicating. Um, and I think, you know, any kind of dream or, or vision that you want to achieve, you need to be able to communicate that to people and get them excited about that. And if you can do that, that's definitely a superpower. Oh, I love that. Good for you. Cool. Well, you're doing well, and, and uh, I've enjoyed getting to know you better. And again, your organization's definitely got a great reputation in the industry. And I appreciate what you're doing for our common customers and prospects because they, they need the help, right? They're, they're good at the blue collar stuff. They're good at fixing roofs and, and doing the, the great work that they do. But they, they need a professional in the back end to help them with these digital and automated technology processes that, that you guys specialize in. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks so much for having me on, man. You bet. The So one last thing. So what what is the main takeaway you would want the listeners to have from our conversation today? Use technology, right? That's what creating the modern day contract is all about. Use technology. And the thing is, is if you've had a company forever, 25, 30 years, right? And it's going just fine without the technology. You, hey, you are an amazing person, an amazing entrepreneur. But hey, let's make that jump because you're about to get even better, right? So don't be afraid to jump on the tech train. Uh, get somebody to help you out with it, right? Maybe if, even if it's somebody internal, right? Who's the best with technology, right? Uh, and, and just get it done. Become the modern day contractor because they're going to be able to communicate better to their customers, better serve their customers. They're going to have better internal communication, right? It's a, it's a no-brainer. So, so check it out. Get some technology and uh, implement it to your, your, your business. Great advice. Thank you. Well, it was a lot of fun having you on. I've enjoyed the conversation and look forward to connecting up and continuing to be in touch down the road. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mike. Awesome. Thank you. So thanks, Nick. And also thank you to the listeners for listening to mine and Nick's conversation today. If you enjoyed the things that we discussed or have interest in some things that Summa Media might be able to help you with or learn something interesting today, please share this episode and the rest of the episodes of the podcast with your colleagues and friends. After all, our goal here is not only to help you improve your business, but your life.